Robin Slim Show. Uh, we're back with Gabriel Napora. Yeah, hello. Hey, how you doing, Gabriel? I'm doing very well. How are you guys doing? Not bad, doing not bad at good, all. Um, now, you're making a movie called Ghost Puncher the Movie? Well, we're sort of in uh, the process of development and, and very close to closing it off. But yes, uh, Ghost Puncher the Movie, yes. Cool. Have you have you sold it? Are you still filming it? What's what's the process? Well, there's there's a lot of pieces to it, sort of thing. So right now we're just going out to talent uh, with it. Uh, absolutely love the script the first time I read it, and um, once talent is attached, uh, we would be moving forward with pre-production on it. Cool, cool. And uh, what's the synopsis of the movie? The synopsis of the movie. I mean, this is the the really sort of short version. Gabriel, are you there? Gabriel. The ghosts are jerks. I'm sorry, uh, your mean, phone just, like a, uh, just cut out for a minute. It. It's Gabriel. Like comedy horror sort of film. Comedy horror? Can you hear us, Gabriel? Uh, sorry, say that again? The, the phone had cut out for a minute. Oh, okay, should I say that again? Yeah, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, so the, 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 the synopsis that I like to give is, you know, it's about a guy who practices the uh, timeless art of punching ghosts because ghosts are jerks. So um, it's kind of like a comedy horror film, uh, very much in line with, you know, a, a few of the, the, the different great comedy horror films that have been out the last little while. It's a great, great project. Awesome, man. I, everything about it sounds amazing. I've, I've been looking at all the pictures, the pictures... Uh, for it are great. Uh, your Twitter pick is like a, a like one of those classic like sheet ghosts with a fist going through it. There was a picture of a, a drawing of Casper with a <laughs> fist in its face. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is, this looks amazing. The one with the uh, power glove. The Nintendo. Power I was gonna glove. ask if the power <laughs> glove was in the movie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It is. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's such a fun script and such a fun project. I really can't wait to get on set and start making it. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know if it was being filmed. Like I said, that's that's cool, though. Um, how did the project come about? Well, basically, uh, the project was brought to me by a director that I had known for about 16 years. And he knew the writer of the project, Jordan, uh, and they had been friends for a while. And Jordan and I, you know, got to talking and just started to feel like there was, you know, really good synergy between us in terms of, how he sees the film and how I see the film as a producer. So my company basically took the, the, the project on. I'm with a company called Imagination Park and, uh, you know, started developing it a little bit further, did a couple rewrites on the script, the director and Jordan did. Um, and then we decided to go out to some talent and, and, you know, try and get some A-list talent attached to the project. Cool. Have there been any biters? Well, we're still... Right now, waiting for a response back, but you know, from I can't I can't name the talent necessarily, uh, but I can say that the two people we're looking at, one of them is an Avenger, um, and uh, the other one is just a brilliant comedic actor, and I think the two of them together, should we be so lucky, uh, would make an, an amazing team. Cool, that's cool. What um what. Is the ghost puncher, is he uh, like an exorcist? I guess you could say he's like, a, yeah, I mean, you could say he's like an exorcist in that, you know, he, he gets rid of ghosts. Like, if you have ghosts and that sort of thing, um, he will punch them away, literally punch <laughs> them away. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, a little bit of a mixture between, I guess, uh, Ghostbusters meets Rocky, the original Ghostbusters, I should say, meets <laughs> yeah. uh, Rocky... Uh, meets, you know, uh, a, a few comedic horror films that have been out for maybe Crumpets or something like that, like yeah. that sort of genre. <laughs> cool. That's cool. Yeah. Well, what I was, I'm really curious about how these uh, fights are going to go down, if the guy's just going to punch them and they're gone, or if he's actually going to engage in, like, like, a long boxing match with these ghosts. Oh, no, we've got some epic boxing matches. <laughs> this isn't, you know... This isn't just as simple as one punch and they're gone. You know, the, ghost, the ghost puncher definitely has his work cut out for him. And, um, you know, the, 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 the whole film has this really cool kind of 80s feel to it. Nice, I like uh, that. Which I think you know, is, is very interesting and timely right now and mm. uh, a lot of fun, too. That's cool. cool well, where are you located, Gabriel? 
I'm uh, I go between Vancouver and uh, Los Angeles. Okay. So I'm I'm always in both uh, both places. That's some good places to be, man. I love them. I mean, you've got you know L.A. for all the excitement, and we've got a an office we work out of at Paramount Studios there, and um, you know Vancouver kind of keeps me grounded. So, got the best of both worlds, I would say. Is that where you're from, Vancouver? Well, I'm originally from uh, Edmonton, Canada, but you know I, I love the city. It got a little too cold for me, so I moved over to uh, Vancouver. Okay, that's cool. And do you own your own uh, film company, correct? Yeah, well, essentially what's happened is, is I have a, a private company called Triton Films, and then recently uh, I took a position as, as a CEO of a public company, so like a company that's traded on the uh, stock market and that sort of thing. Wow. And, um, you know, we've managed to raise a bunch of money, and the share price has recently gone up five times, and uh, we have money at this point to, you know, really create really cool projects, you know, like Ghost Puncher and a few of the other things we have, so... Um, you know, beyond excited to work with just the most talented people on earth. Like, literally, the people we're working with are incredible. Who are the other two creators? Are they um, writers and you're the producer? That's right. So, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself, you know, I think it would be stretching it to consider myself a creator on Ghost Adventure. Uh, but we have Jordan McCloskey, who comes from a acting background, but is, like, a brilliant writer, like, just one of the best writers I've seen especially like you know, for something like Ghost Puncher to be one of the first things he's written, uh, the guy is just amazing. And the other uh, person involved is a director named Trevor Cornish. And Trevor comes from a, a, a TV commercial background. I would say he's one of the top uh, comedic TV commercial directors in the world. And I've known him for, you know, 15 years back when he was doing music videos and such. So... You know, it's, it's kind of nice that everything came full circle, and I get to work with um, I get to work with both guys who you know I'm I'm huge fans of. That's cool. Did they contact you? They did. So Trevor, you know, thought of me immediately because I had done um, a bunch of, of sales to different you know large studios in LA over the last couple of years. So uh, Trevor thought you know I would be a good producer to bring on board to try and take. Uh, Ghost Puncher to the next level on, on a business sense. And, you know, I think, um, I think we're doing that. Cool, cool. And um, what else, what other projects have you done? I saw um, that you worked with uh, Danny Trejo and um, uh, Martin Sheen. Yeah, yeah. I, I worked with uh, Danny Trejo on a project called Walk 2045, uh, which is this, like, epic uh, sci-fi film that um, is just, you know, super, super cool uh, and is just getting finished right now. And I worked with uh, Martin Sheen on a project called Badge of Honor, which is this sort of like a uh, cop thriller film, okay. uh, um, which is also really cool, and, and just finished a, a film in Toronto uh, called Seraphim. How was it working with those guys? Oh, man. I mean, Danny Trejo is like the, the coolest guy in the world. Um uh, easy to deal with, the nicest guy you could ever meet. Uh, his bodyguard is also equally as nice. Wow. Um, just, you know, amazing. Oh, oh no. what happened? Oh. Gabriel, call us back, dude. <sighs> Skype just, like, take a shit? I think I, his phone cut out. Yeah, his earlier it cut out for a little bit, but yeah. it just... The... Robin Slim Show. Okay. Gabriel. I'm sorry. No, that's, that's the, okay, that's dude. <laughs> that's the pain of cell phones. I apologize, guys. Am, <laughs> I, am, I, am I back? Yes. Yes. So Danny I'm Trejo was cool, and you said his uh, bodyguard as well? Yeah, his bodyguard is super cool. You know, anybody related, and I've met a lot of people with Danny, you know, in his entourage, and Danny himself, just absolute class act. Wow. And I, I would say the same about Martin Sheen. Like, you're not going to find a more gentlemanly man to work with. Like, absolutely gracious. That's cool. Very easy to work with and, and such a gentleman. Because he seems really. like that, but, you know, you never know behind the scenes. Like, he seems like a really genuinely great guy. But, yeah, you never know. Yeah, and It's so true. But, you know, my experience is, like, having dealt with a lot of different actors, the sort of A-list actors, I would say, are always really cool to deal with. 
the ones that are really challenging to deal with are like the sort of medium level actors, either the guys who like had fame for a long time and sort of lost it okay. or the ones who never quite made it. You know, some of those guys are very challenging, but the A-listers are nothing but fun to work with. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. What, yeah, what is, um, work with those guys. like the favorite project you've ever done? Oh man. Um, you know, there's been a few things that have really, uh, that I've really loved doing. Like, Early on in his career, I worked with uh, Neil Blumkamp, who's the director of District 9. And, and, and we did some, you know, short films together and that sort of thing. And one of them, you know, later became Chappie called Tetravail. And um, that, you know, that was always a project that was, like, very, very dear to me. Um, this film I have coming out called Juarez 2045, I think, is going to be, like, a very, very cool sci-fi film that a lot of fans are, are going to, you know, absolutely love. And I have a project with Paramount right now that I can't talk too much about, uh, but it's an epic sci-fi film with the bigger produce, biggest producer in the world, who I can't mention, but if you look up the highest grossing producer in the world, you can figure out who it is. And um, that, to me, will be you know, just a, a massive beast of a project that I can't wait to work on. Wow. Oh, man. Uh, going back to the short film you did that uh, Chappie was based on, did you enjoy Chappie? You know, I mean, um, it was something I, I thought it might be a little bit different because I wasn't involved in the production of, of Chappie, just involved in the in the short film. Um, there's a lot of elements that I really like to it. You know, I certainly like the visual effects and the visuals to the film. In terms of the film itself, I, uh, I, I think there were some cool elements and then I think there was, you know, a few elements that maybe missed the mark a little bit, but, you know, Neil is such a, a massive talent in terms of what he does. Um, you know, he's only going to be a better and better filmmaker as he gets older and older. So what I'm curious, and because you're, you're uh, friends with Neil, um, did he tell you any horror stories about Die Antwerp? Because I've heard they were not fun to work with on set. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have any, um, any Die Antwerp stories. You know, we talked a lot after he had done uh, District 9 and stuff, and... Uh, you know, the, uh, shooting in the slums of South Africa, I think, uh, you know, had its challenges and that sort of thing. And um, when you're dealing with big producers, too, that can have its elements of, uh, of, of challenge. But um, not so much on Chappie. We didn't share too many stories on Chappie. What was the biggest challenge of shooting in South Africa? Well, I think, you know, the, 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 the biggest challenge, because um, I just got back from shooting in some slums, too. Like, I was just in Ibiza shooting in some slums there. Believe it or not, Ibiza has slums. Um, anytime you're shooting in the slums, uh, how would you say this? Like, crowd control becomes, like, a very, very difficult thing, as well wondering. as, like, personal safety. Not necessarily yeah. even from the level of somebody attacking you, although I've had that happen to me myself. Wow. It can also come from the level of, like, you're stepping on needles or oh. knives or, like, you know, just bad stuff that nobody should be uh, dealing with on a film set or, or living conditions you have to deal with. Yeah, I was wondering if, like, ever, like, any local, like, thugs would come in and, like, like try to demand protection money or anything like that. Well, that's happened to me. I mean, I just shot in Ibiza and Morocco, and in both places... I was shooting in, you know, I guess you'd say the slummier areas. And in both places, we had bosses come and uh, basically demand money. You know, in one place, we were actually threatened uh, to be taken hostage. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, the cool thing is you come out with some great stories, but, you know, while you're going <laughs> through it, uh, it's not going to lie. It's pretty nerve-wracking. So what do you do in that situation? Yeah. Well, you basically, uh, we had some, uh, in Morocco, for instance, we had some uh, Arabic-speaking producers with us who basically tried to talk things down. You try and get your shots as quickly as you can. You try and make a little bit of a payoff as quickly as you can. And otherwise, you know, your basic uh, thing is to get out of there as quickly as, as possible because things can escalate. You know, I mean, I've had guns pulled out on us in Detroit on another shoot. Wow. And uh, the, the best you can do is, you know, just try and de-escalate things and get out of there as quickly as you can. Wow. So now does it make you want to not film in locations like that? or Not me, because I, I sort of like that. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't 
how would I say this? I like coming away with the stories. And in any case like this, things could have gone, you know, very, very wrong. Mm. And then I wouldn't be laughing about it or anything like that. But, yeah. you know, I, I don't shy away from almost filming anywhere uh, in any slum or any city or anything. So as long as you've got protection, usually you're okay. But, you know, I mean, bad things can happen on, on any size shoot. Do you guys, like, as a film company, do they hire, like, Armed guards and stuff? Well, in Detroit, we hired armed guards because we were filming in the worst areas of Detroit. And when guns were pulled out on us, you know, our security basically pulled out guns back. Yeah. And that, you know, de-escalated the situation after okay. a little while. Everybody, you know, nobody wanted to shoot out a team, thank goodness. Wow. Um, in other places, like when you're in Morocco or Ibiza, you're not really going to bring, like, armed guards because there's, like, a different mentality when it comes to, like, guns and that no, sort of thing there. Care over there. No, they're I was going to say, in, like... run right into, like, a firing gun. Jules said the police even demand protection money oh, over wow. there. Yeah, I mean, that absolutely. When we were in Morocco, you know, and we were driving from one location to another... Uh, we would get stopped and the police would threaten us with like a thousand dollar ticket. Uh, but then we'd send our Arabic speaking producer to go talk to him. And for $20, we'd get out of the ticket. We had done nothing wrong. Like they were just summarily stopping us just to basically take us for money. Wow. So, so you bring um, that guy around with you everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that guy is a keeper. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he was, he was very handy to have for sure. So, I mean, in most countries, what you do is you just get, like, really smart people to kind of come with you. Um, and, and you do try and buy off, you know, the bosses ahead of time, but sometimes it's not possible. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering if you ever, like, had connections there that you were hooked up with, like, to, to take, like, to help come along and protect you and talk to them. Yeah. Well, so, like, in Ibiza, when we were shooting there, we hired a local company basically to get us any permits we needed and to come around and make sure, you know, if anything escalated in any way, we would still be safe. And um, Ibiza is like, you know, this big party place where you have a hundred million dollar yachts, but on the other side of Ibiza, you have like poverty that I haven't seen in many places, like very, very poor people. So when we were shooting in the slums, you know, we got a um, hundred kids coming after us and, a, you know, a bunch of gangsters and all sorts of stuff. And luckily, we did have this, this, this company that sort of de-escalated things, found the boss of the area, we paid off the boss, and then at that point, we were safe moving on. You know, nobody would touch us, but before yeah. that, we were getting threats and all kinds of crazy stuff. Wow. Well, that's like, even like Skrillex, he's, that, he's like a DJ, and he did a video in, in I think, South America somewhere, in uh, the Dominican, and yeah, you see kids right. with like machine guns and everything. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, it's uh, it's insane what you can see in some of these places that you go to. Like, anything goes. I mean, we've had yeah. machetes pulled out on us, in, you know, even in Canada, in Saskatchewan, uh, shooting a project there. So Jules has uh, said that, the yeah. machetes. Wow. Yeah, I mean, We've been we've been very lucky. I guess I would just say that, and hopefully our our string of luck continues. Yeah, I would say like that's crazy. That thinking like you could lose your life over and a, you're a movie. Very brave to keep yeah. doing that too, to be like, Dude. oh, let's do it again. And, like you get that adrenaline. <laughs> I guess you get that adrenaline, Rob's where it's like I cr you crave that excitement. Like a standoff. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty nuts, and you know I mean. There is an adrenaline rush to it, you know, at least until you get burnt. Mm. And we haven't really been burnt. We've just come away with, like, really good stories. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if we have good karma or what. I guess it's <laughs> kind of similar to what uh, we talked to this guy, Julian, last week, who went around uh, fist-fighting Muslims in Europe. In Europe, yeah. And we, a we asked him, um, what, did, what did he say, that, like, once you get your ass kicked... It's not fun anymore. He's like, you don't really crave it as much because he was he was really craving like the fights for a while, and then he got really beat. And he's like, once you get beat like once or twice, you're you kind of get over <laughs> you're it. You're done. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that, I, I believe it. That's the truth. If I had gotten shot in Detroit, or you know, if one of our guys had gotten macheted in yeah. Saskatchewan, or if we had gotten taken hostage in Morocco. Um, I probably wouldn't be, you know, extolling the virtues of shooting in the slums of third world countries. But, yeah. you know, for now, some of the best footage comes from those places. Like, you really can't, 
uh, get much better than, than mixing sci-fi with sort of, um, you know, lower scale areas, I guess you'd say. Not, not in terms of the people, but like economically. Where is Ghost Puncher uh, planned to be filmed? Well, we'd like to shoot in Vancouver, um, and there's a few reasons, you know, why Vancouver. Right now, the American dollar is obviously very, very good in Canada. It's, it's one of the two places where I call home, um, as well as the fact that, you know, uh, Vancouver has, like, amazing crews and locations for this type of film. So I think, you know, the infrastructure being here and everything, as well as, like, stars love coming out here, uh, I, I think it would just be a great spot. Yeah. Do you, do you think um, that you're going to be looking for locations that have like a supernatural lore to them in the area, like a place that's known to be haunted? That's a great question. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting question you bring up because one of Vancouver's uh, top places to film in is this place called Riverview Hospital. And Riverview is a former mental institution where, you know, I, I guess you could say a lot of bad things happened or probably happened. And as you walk through the halls of, of Riverview, because I've shot there many times, um, it's so massive, this place, it's easy to get lost. And at night, when you get lost and it's dark, you start seeing things. Like, it's just the most crazy place to shoot, like, literally. And I can see us uh, filming part of it there, you know, which I think uh, both adds to the aesthetic of the film, but also adds to the tone and mood, because it really has a feel to it. Mm. That's cool. One, yeah, it's it's a very very cool place. Lots of films are shot there. One local place here, I would definitely I would definitely um, suggest is Batstow. Batstow. Is that town? Yeah, Batstow. It's, oh. it's right in the middle of the Pine Barrens. Yeah, here. I pass it on the way to the, yeah, get the, that, my sons. That mansion? Did you see that mansion? There yeah. With the spire. Yeah. That place is fucking haunted, dude. Like I've seen. <laughs> oh wow. When I was a little kid, we went there. I my dad. My dad used to be a chief ranger there. Yeah, and he that's took us right. for a tour there. We heard like something friggin' wailing up in the the bell tower right there. Wow. Oh, crazy. Yeah, you did tell me you and your dad saw some crazy yeah, shit. Yeah. Um, my dad saw a servant bell. Wow. This, this thing hadn't been hooked up since like the colonial times. Yeah. There's no rope on it. He saw the fucking bell just ringing. Wow. Gabriel, we have Great. to wrap this up, dude, but where can everybody find the movie? Uh, uh, Ghost Puncher? Or which, which film? On Twitter. Yeah, Ghost Puncher or you in general. Well, uh, you can find my company at imaginationpark.com. Uh, you'll find a lot of stuff about the company. Um, Ghost Puncher, I think, you know, in the next few months, you're going to start seeing a lot of news coming out on Variety and Deadline. Uh, Hollywood Reporter and all that sort of stuff. If we're fortunate enough to get these um, these two actors that we've just gone out for, I think uh, there will be some major announcements coming from that. I look uh, forward to it. Yeah, I, I think you know I'm pretty easy to find online if you just search my name. Cool, dude. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Gabriel. It's been an honor. Yeah. Completely my pleasure, guys. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. Anytime, oh, man. man. All right, we'll be talking soon. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah, you. Have a good one. All right, see you later. Later.